Hey gang, we're in Makati, Philippines, and we're going to RJ Bistro for a very special Elvis show. I've been an Elvis fan ever since I first heard him sing when I was about eight years old, and I heard him sing Hound Dog and Don't Be Cruel on the radio. Not only do I love Elvis, I want to see how they do him in Asia. It's pretty obvious he's not only the greatest of all time, he's the greatest of all time by far. No one else has come close to him. He's been dead for over 40 years and his music is still selling. Can you tell us what your first Elvis Presley experience was? Uh, it was uh, 1987. I was 14 years old. I was watching a local channel and it was a surprise because everybody was talking about Elvis Presley. And being a 14 year old teenager, I don't know anything about Elvis. It just so happened that day, I believe, they were celebrating the 10th anniversary of his passing. So I was so captured by everybody talking about how good the man was on stage and off the stage. And they kept on playing music of Elvis and I got hooked on it. That was the first experience I had with him, listening all day and the next day, I, you know, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm asking my, my aunts, my uncle, my father, do they have an album of Elvis? And they were laughing at me. They said, you should be listening to Minudo. <laughs> or uh, uh, Duran Duran or Span, Span du Ballet at the time. But I was looking for an Elvis album. And since then, um, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan and I, I love the king. You obviously have to be a fan to do what you do. <laughs> yeah. You, you couldn't do that and not yeah. be a fan. Yeah, I believe that. He's still alive because you know men nowadays <laughs> it, it's so rare to see such passion and love and you know thoughtness and whatever Elvis has it all honestly I mean if he could reincarnate anytime soon I will marry him nobody like I said his music touched people like nobody, yes, else. nobody else there was never a performer mm -hmm. that could perform like him and he had more feeling mm -hmm. in his songs than anybody. True. And I think when he sang, everybody that was listening yes. to him thought he was singing to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He made you feel like he was singing to you. I mean, he's singing right to your soul. Exactly. Right to your soul. That's what I love about I him. I tell people that when God sings, he uses Elvis's voice. Definitely true. <laughs> human beings were not meant to sound that good. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They were not meant to sound that good. Nobody else sounds that yeah. good. The closest they can come to it is by impersonating him. Exactly. And they say that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. True. And I do believe it is. Yeah. And he's been dead for 40 years and they're still buying his music. People are still making a living exactly. impersonating him because people want to see him. True. True. More than anyone that has ever lived. There was a Elvis impersonator that I went to see and he made the comment that in our lifetime there will only be one Elvis. Exactly. And personally, I think there will only be one Elvis ever. Of all time. In everybody's lifetime. <laughs> True. I think that's it. I think we've seen the greatest there ever was. I'm fortunately older than you, <laughs> so I was around when Elvis hit it big, I was eight years old. I heard him singing on the radio. I've loved him ever since. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go see him in person. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So Douglas, you're originally from Japan. 
Did you grow up with Elvis when you were in Japan? Well, they call me from the Elvis from Japan, but I'm actually born in Arkansas. I'm from the U.S. Okay, you're a southern boy like Elvis. The well, truth. But what got you into Elvis? Well, I first heard Elvis when I was knee-high to a grasshopper, and he was singing on the Ed Sullivan show. He was singing a song called Don't Be Cruel. Wow. And he had this funny name, and I said, gee, guy only has one name? But I like that song. And my sister used to play that song all day long until she had that big 78 record that looked like a hook sure. cap, and it turned white. So she was the Elvis fan and got me interested. That's how I got started. And what has Elvis meant to you over the years? Elvis is a... Uh, is an icon. He's the king of rock and roll and uh, of course people here will never look like him. We don't sound like him but we love him. He's our idol and all we want to do is keep his legacy going for the next generation and that's what we're doing. So that, that's what we do. We, we don't, you know, there's only one album. No, no one, a lot of people try to impersonate him and then forget about it. But just keep, perpetuate his image and his legacy. That's what I want to do. <laughs> He's been dead, I'm sure, longer yes. than you've been around. <laughs> yes, I think Elvis is just a legend. He's the king of rock and roll. And I'm glad you're exposing his music to a younger generation because they'd really be missing out. Yeah. So Dan, what did you think of his performance? I liked it. Uh, real upbeat. I recognized his suit right away as being from the television special, Fun. the Christmas special from 1968. Huh. Some people called it a comeback special. I never yeah. understood why, because as far as I was concerned, Elvis never left. Yeah. He was making movies though instead of doing concerts, and it had been about, what, eight years or something, I think, since he yeah. performed on stage yeah. when he made that special. I suppose it was a comeback to the stage. When you do a good job as Elvis, the way the crowd loved him, yeah. if you do a good job, they love you, and that's got to be a great feeling to be yeah. on stage really and great. have people yeah, I can see you the, know, respond the way they do. I can see the people, they, they really appreciate what I'm singing. And, uh, you know, uh, it was really uh, awesome. You know, I just, uh, you know, those lines, you know, it's look, I can't explain it. Just coming out of my my mouth and saying it, you know, I just feel really, you know, like a magic. Wow. What inspired you to start singing Elvis Presley songs? See, way back when I was 14, I heard the song No More. And when I heard that No More song, I kept on playing that cassette tape just to get that lyrics. And then I keep on singing that song over and over again and then uh, I asked my mom to buy me a guitar and then uh, I never knew how to play the guitar <laughs> my cousin would come to, my, to our house to tune my guitar so I learned how to tune it by year and then after that you know I bought some minus one and then later on I bought some songs uh, song sheets with chords mm -hmm. and then I keep on playing and that's all right mama my happiness don't be cool mm. I'll break it all, you know don't be, be cool. cool yeah was, don't be cool was my favorite that, don't be cool for a long time was his favorite I guess he finally liked it's now or never better when he recorded that but don't be okay. cool was his biggest seller along with hound dog oh. and that don't be cruel when I heard that as a eight-year-old kid that was it I came on the radio and been a fan ever since. Yeah. It's a beautiful song. Yeah, and you know what? When I was 19 years old, I recorded My Happiness, That's All Right, and then I gave it to my mom as a gift. Wow. Well, Which is know. interesting because that's what Elvis did before he was famous. Yeah, I know. He recorded a couple he records did it. for his mother. Yeah, I just gave it to my mom and uh, still had the receipt, you know. And, uh, well, the tapes were lost. Because, you know, just like Elvis, 
His intention was to give it as a gift and to be heard as well. So that's my intention too. So I lost the tapes, but I got the receipt. Is there any special way that Travis, Travis, Sorry. Elvis, Elvis, Elvis has influenced you in your life in general? He loves his mom. I love my mom too, so much. My mom passed away five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if she's still here now, mm -hmm. I'm sure she will be proud for me. For sure. Yeah, because you know, she knows that I wanted to sing live on stage. Wow. And this is like, you know, a break for me. Well, that's something you have in common with Elvis because he lost his mother. Yeah. Lost and I, I had read that she's in the audience yeah. in his second movie, Loving You, when he's up on stage singing yeah. songs like Teddy Bear. Yeah. And he couldn't watch that for a long time because, because his was... mother is in the audience in that movie. Yeah, watching him, right? I remember that, yeah. Okay. It's been 41 years, baby. Yeah, 41 years today he died. Okay. It's incredible that it's people incredible. are still talking about him. He made such yeah. an impression on the whole world. Yeah, and everyone, everyone. It's too bad he never got to make a tour in Europe and Asia. Yeah, especially here in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. it would have been unbelievable if he had come over here. Yeah, boy. <laughs> So I'm here with the main man, the guitar man, <laughs> RJ, an icon here in the Philippines, an owner of RJ Bistro. Oh, so RJ, what made you decide to start putting on these Elvis shows? Well, uh, we didn't want the memory of Elvis to go away as far as the younger generation was concerned. So we wanted to refresh their, their minds every birthday and death anniversary of Elvis because Elvis was unique. God never made another one like him. He had everything, looks, talent, uh, charisma, everything. It's, he was great. He moved different. His hair was different. Everything was different about him. He could represent everybody, you know. So I, I think he was unique, really unique, and God never made another one like him. So we didn't want that memory to go away. We want, we want the younger generation to experience the source of what they hear today. And even the Beatles idolized Elvis. Dad, what do you have to say about RJ's Elvis show? <laughs> well, it was great. It's a highlight of my trip. And really, one of the highlights of my life because something that I enjoyed, he let me, I didn't know he was going to do this, yeah. he had me interview the, the other people. Yeah. And I tell you, those last two guys, the girls were younger because yeah. Elvis was already dead when they were born. Yeah, yeah. So he's a little new experience for them. Right. Those other guys, the one guy was a little boy. Yeah. And they talked about what I call Elvis moments. You have things like the first time you ever heard them that they never forgot. Yeah. And he touched them so much it made them cry on different occasions. Yeah. So I really enjoy hearing those guys talk about Elvis because I feel the same way. Yeah. Elvis makes me cry. I listen to some of his songs. I swear I'm listening to God sing. Yeah. And it makes you cry because no singer has ever touched people the way he did and you can tell these guys were touched yeah. They heard Elvis sing and that was it in the shower I was singing loud enough for my father to hear it in the garage and my father was asking my mom can you please tell that boy to shut up and my mother said I recall this my mother said let him be you don't know maybe in the future he will be the Elvis Press of the Philippines and it stuck on my head 
And last year, they had a contest for Elvis of Asia. 23 contestants out of seven countries. The champion of Japan, Italy, Singapore, I believe Indonesia, and uh, some, some Filipino. Elvis is also they joined, so I got, I got the title last year. Well, your, your story is a perfect example of what I try to tell my son and tell people, that Elvis Presley's music touched people mm -hmm. like no other singer there's ever been. And you're an example of that. Yeah. You talk about how you heard him, mm -hmm. you couldn't believe what you were hearing, yeah, yeah. and you've never forgot it. Yeah. It uh, changed your life. I was touched because dur during the time, you know, uh, my, my parents are having, you know, uh, the usual stuff, you know, yeah. they quarrel, you know. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm an only child, just like Elvis. So no brothers, no sisters. Yeah. So I'm on my own on uh, carrying the, the burden of your parents, you know, yeah. you know, uh, fighting. So I went on and put my records and play it out loud. Loud enough for them to, to go out of the house and, you know, talk outside. <laughs> I'll play my Elvis all day long. And since I'm an only child, so I have, I have my ways. <laughs> and uh, again, last June of this year, I went to Graceland. Oh, I've always wanted to go there. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, lucky me because that was the grand prize of me winning the Elvis Presley of Asia. So the, oh. grand, the grand prize is a nine-day tour from Nashville to Memphis to New Orleans. Did you get to stay in the Heartbreak Hotel? It's not around anymore. Oh. I stayed in Sheraton Hotel, just adjacent to Beale Street, where the action is. But the good thing there, three days in, in, in Memphis, I went over Sun Studios, and uh, of course, the, the mansion and, the, and the, the museum and the meditation. And man, when I was in the meditation garden, I cried. Well, I don't think you have to be ashamed of that because yeah. I have always wanted to go there at this time of the year. They have the candlelight. Mm -hmm. Well, this week. Who else, after 40 plus years of being, do they have a, a candlelight visitor? <laughs> I tried to tell my son, mm -hmm. I know, I, and all the people I've ever heard of through history, mm -hmm. I only know two people whose birth they celebrate mm -hmm. and, and whose, the day they died, people remember and they mourn or pay mm -hmm. their respects. I said, one of those was Jesus and one was Elvis. Yeah, I said, all the other people who ever lived, mm -hmm. those are the only two people that are mm -hmm. remembered both their birthday and their death. And ironically, uh, ironically, they're both old king. Exactly. <laughs> but, but just like Alva said, there's only one there's king. There's only and, one king. Jesus was, Christ. Yeah, he didn't and, claim it. Yeah, yeah, he never claimed it, he, he never. But claimed. it just shows you how he touched things. Mm -hmm. People, I tell people that when God sings, he uses Elvis's voice mm -hmm. because people were not meant to sound that good. I mm -hmm. swear, he's got some songs that do make you cry. Yeah, I, I swear I'm listening yeah. to God singing because yeah. you go, this can't be a human being. And imagine. Huh? Can't be a human being making this sound. Imagine Elvis Presley as the king of rock and roll. He's not only the king of rock and roll, he's the king of gospel. Yeah. And you haven't heard gospel until oh you hear him sing it. Just like you talk about where you remember things like when I first turned up saying don't be cruel mm -hmm. I was an eight-year-old boy doing the dishes <laughs> me and my brother grabbed the frying pan and mm -hmm. pretended it was a guitar. guitar and we used to do that that was 1956 tell you how old I am but like if I had to name a favorite song I can't really name one for sure but if I had to name one I'd probably pick his gospel song mm -hmm. crying in the chapel yeah. and I remember where I was when I first heard it I was mm -hmm. driving down Main Street mm -hmm. In my hometown, where I'm from, I was on Ninth and Main, and Crying in the Chapel came on. It's just, mm -hmm. I mean, I was already a big Elvis fan for mm -hmm. years, but when I heard that song, it just blew me mm -hmm. away yeah. that I remember where I was mm -hmm. when I heard that song. Yeah. Things like that. Very clear. I never yeah. forget. Yeah. Just like I was telling my wife, they were showing the Elvis concert from Hawaii on there. Mm -hmm. and one thing I remember about Hawaii, maybe my favorite song from that concert. I'll remember was, you. Yes. I know it. I feel you. I, 
And I said, here's another experience I have never forgot. But he's singing that song, which I said is one of my, I got five Elvis songs picked out that you play at my funeral. If you play music at my funeral, you yeah. play these, that's one of them. Yeah. But I said, when he did that concert in Hawaii, there's a moment in there that I never forgot. It's only a couple seconds, but he's singing that song, I'll Remember You, and he turns around and he looks at his band and mm. he smiles as if to say, you can tell that he's really happy, mm. the crowd is really into it. Mm. And he sings and he turns around and he smiles at the band as if to say, look what I can do with my voice. Mm. Look at how mm. these people are loving what I'm yeah, doing yeah. with my voice. Yeah. And it's only a couple of seconds, mm -hmm. but I never forgot that when I saw that concert mm -hmm. and he turned around, it's another thing that has stuck with me all my life. I cry from some of his songs because mm -hmm. he touches you. And like I said, he makes you feel like he's singing to you, doesn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah. When you hear him sing, you think he's singing yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, you know, the, the word big difference is an understatement. It's more than that yeah. compared to other singers. No? Yeah, it's nobody's more to that. Come close. Yeah, really. Nobody's come close. And I think here they'll be listening to him a hundred years from now. They'll be listening to his music. The guys that are singing today, where will they be? And I think they'll still be listening to Elvis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dad, what do you think of the Elvis show? I loved it. It's the highlight of my trip. What's the most special thing about it so far? Well, I enjoyed the performances, of course, but something I wasn't counting on was interviewing some of the Elvis impersonators. And that really was meaningful to me because I loved hearing about what I call Elvis moments where they talked about certain things in their life that really touched them. Like the first time they ever heard or saw Elvis and it was something they never forgot. And obviously it changed their whole life because I've had moments like that myself. You can really relate to them, right? Like with what yes. they experienced, how they started. Um, admiring Elvis, following Elvis, and singing Elvis Presley songs. Exactly, what he meant to their life. He changed their life, and I can say the same thing about him because I can't sing like him or anything like that, but I enjoy his music so much. And he was so inspirational. He brought such pleasure to my life, but he also inspired me. I think I'm like a lot of guys that could say this. Although I never saw him perform in person and I never met him, I loved that man for the pleasure he brought to my life and for the inspiration that he was to me. And I think there are millions of people that could say the same thing. Is there any specific effect that Elvis had on you? Like, Well, one of the things he does for me and I'm sure a lot of people, he might be singing to hundreds of people mm -hmm. at one time but he made every person who was listening to him feel like he was singing to them. And he just touched something in people that other singers just don't seem to be able to reach. And what sets Elvis apart from all other musicians? Well, first of all, he obviously has the greatest voice. I've also never seen a performer who did a better job of dancing and moving to his own music while he was singing. I never seen anyone else that could do it that well. Probably the next best would be Tom Jones, who was a friend of Elvis's. What are the top three characteristics of Elvis that you really admire? Well, of course, his talent for singing, mm -hmm. his talent for performing. Some people don't think he was a good actor, but if you watch some of his movies, I think he was a great actor on some of those movies. There's a movie called Follow That Dream where he plays a simple hillbilly type character and he has to be a lawyer in court and defend his father. And he just does an amazing job in that scene defending his father in court. I think that was a Oscar winning performance. And I don't think a lot of people have given him credit for just how good of an actor he was. And then just to be that good, he just inspires you. He inspires you because he can make you feel. He touches people emotionally. As you saw when I interviewed some of those impersonators, he changed their lives. And sometimes right from the very beginning, the very first time they heard him or saw him, he changed their life from that moment on. Their life was never the same. There are so many um, singers, musicians that 
have become popular after Elvis. But if you could talk to the young people now, would you tell them? Or would you encourage them to listen to Elvis? Well, I would encourage them to listen to Elvis if they want to listen to the best singer of all time, the best singer by far, who by the way inspired a lot of the people of today. But they're not as good as he is, but he inspired them, and some of them are very talented and very good. But there's nobody close to Elvis. I think they'll be listening to him a hundred years from now. How many people from today will they be listening to a hundred years from now?